two dam uh, bladder. It's the piece that you see behind us. Uh, we are looking into the final causes, but we do know one thing. There is no evidence of any foul play at all. So it appears that uh, something we've been concerned about for some time has occurred. Uh, the city engaged with the manufacturer of the dam's uh, Bridgestone to discuss and move forward with a replacement dam system. When the dams were originally installed, they were to be designed to have a watering system that would allow continuous flow of the water over the dams. That did not occur when they were first installed. In addition, during the period of time we've had experience with them, the manufacturing process included ceramic chips that were intended to add to the length of life of the dams themselves. But in this desert environment, with the cold of the winter and the heat of the summer, and without the watering system, the chips actually uh, added to the deterioration of a piece of the dam structure. So we began discussions with Bridgestone and concluded a contract uh, two years ago that required that the dams be replaced. We are in process of doing that. Fortunately, timing sometimes can be a good thing because we were to begin the replacement process today. There's going to be a crew uh, erecting a crane and beginning the process of reinstallation of the new dam segments this morning. Fortunately, if this event were going to occur, it occurred yesterday and prevented any loss of life to the crews or loss of property associated with the repair. We are delighted to say that to date and to this time, there have been no reports of injury or loss of life. That was our first concern and our first response. Immediately upon the event occurring, we opened the emergency operations system, our emergency operations center, and alerted the downstream cities. We're grateful to the city of Phoenix for deploying police officers to examine the uh, downstream uh, riverbed to assure that there were no individuals in the river. They also flew the riverbed with a helicopter to make sure no one was stranded. So we thank the city of Phoenix Police Department for their immediate assistance in that regard. The systems worked exactly as they had been planned. As part of the construction of Town Lake and this dam system, we anticipated and prepared for emergency operations, including the possibility, as is in every instance of a dam across this country, that there may be a dam failure. The systems worked exactly as they were intended to work. We're moving forward now with the operation to replace the dam system. Our intention is to complete that now with no water in the lake uh, on a much expedited basis. We're working with our contractor to go forward immediately to begin the replacement process. We already have two of the replacement dam segments uh, on hand and they'll be installed expeditiously. Our goal is to have the replacement system in place and the lake open and operating by November 1st. I'm grateful for our city staff who demonstrated what is so great about Tempe and its organizational structure. This is a staff that responded immediately, put the right priorities in place immediately, protected the public first, and began and worked all night to make sure we had our options available to us by this morning. I remind you, this is only 12 hours after the initial incident, and this city has responded that rapidly. I'd now like to turn it over to our city manager, Charlie Meyer, who will explain some of the additional items. Mr. Meyer? Thank you, Mayor. Um, Bears repeating, what we believe we have is a straight line tear along the dam bladder number two uh, that pretty much took out the entire bladder and uh, it, would, it would tend to indicate that it occurred along a seam line. Uh, what bears uh, important repeating from what the mayor said is that the police department has indicated that there is no indication of criminal activity in this. So it looks like it was a, an occurrence to the bladder and nothing that was caused by any, uh, any kind of criminal activity. Uh, the work to replace the dams is actually underway and the work was scheduled to start today and it will in fact start today. Uh, what we're evaluating right now is the likelihood that we may go ahead with replacing several of the dam segments immediately while the lake is down uh, with the opportunity to uh, perhaps bring up a fourth segment while the uh, lake is refilling, or as the lake refills. But the opportunity here is to be able to, the opportunity here is to be able to potentially do this work faster than was originally planned and at a lesser cost. 
the original plan would have had us put up a temporary dam around each of the bladders and then replace the bladder behind that temporary dam and it may be unnecessary for us to do that. So uh, we're, we're pleased that we are moving ahead with this. Uh, as the mayor indicated, we do have an agreement with Bridgestone uh, that they are covering the cost of these dam replacements. And uh, with that, the, the project is likely to cost less than was originally anticipated. Uh, the intent is, again, the mayor indicated, is that we would like to be able to be completed by November 1st. We think that that's feasible and that we'd be, if we make the decision to go ahead and keep the lake empty while we do the replacement of at least three of the bladders, uh, we believe that it's still possible to have the lake back in operation by November 1st. And as most of you may know, that becomes our busiest season for a whole lot of events that occur along the lake, including events that occur in the water, uh, not the least of which is the Arizona Ironman. So we are optimistic that we will be able to move ahead. And again, bearing repeating, uh, all of our safety systems were in place, our safety systems worked, and all indications are that, uh, that everything that we had planned uh, went as uh, when is scheduled. So uh, with that, I think we we're prepared to take questions. Mr. Meyer or Mayor, whose job was it and how often does someone look at the dam, look at the bladders and say, looks okay, doesn't look okay? Let me, let me get to those questions. There are a few issues that uh, came up in Mr. Meyer's presentation that may be helpful. Uh, first, the dam segments that we have in-house already are segments one and three. The way this dam setup is structured, dam segment three could be swapped into dam segment number two, uh, but dam segment number two has already been manufactured and is being shipped as we speak. So the process we intend to go through will be to get dams, uh, at this stage, we anticipate dam segments one, two, and three replaced immediately. We'll call for dam section four as that one is being remanufactured so we can refill the lake and all of the segments of the dam will essentially have been replaced. The public has been protected in this entire process uh, because we were sufficiently concerned about uh, the timing of the dam replacements that we prevented public access to this portion of the lake so that uh, if anyone had been on the lake at the time that the bladder failure occurred, all they would have experienced is the water level of the lake uh, being reduced. And there were no flows or currents coming out of the lake. In fact, uh, as an example, uh, the, the maximum flow that occurred during this event was about 15,000 cubic feet per second. Uh, that's a typical release that we have going on in the lake during storm flows. We've had boating activities on the lake even with 6,000 cubic feet per second taking place as planned activities. So that element was also addressed. In terms of how the dam elements have been inspected, uh, I think perhaps the best person to address that would be Don Hawks. Yeah, we'll bring Mr. Hawks up. 